week one of the Alliance of American Football has ended, and uh, we learned a lot about their quarterbacks. Here's what we learned. We saw a lot of guys make mistakes, and I want to talk about some of the most common mistakes they made week one. One of the most common mistakes we saw was, and this is really for all young quarterbacks paying attention, please listen to this, is a lot of these quarterbacks could not understand and could not recognize where pressure was coming from. And when they did recognize pressure was coming, they looked entirely uncomfortable dealing with it. So again, young quarterbacks, this is extremely important. Listen to the words I'm about to say. A defense blitzing you, a defense bringing extra guys to try to get after the quarterback is a really, really good thing. You want that. You welcome that. You embrace that. It's a numbers game. If a linebacker blitzes, if, if three linebackers all blitz me, yeah, that sucks. I'm probably going to get hit. But what that means is underneath routes in the middle of the field are probably going to be wide open. And if they're not, it means we have man-to-man coverage all across the board. Now, that can't happen in the Alliance of American Football. In the Alliance of American Football, you can only bring a five-man rush. But again, what that means usually is one linebacker is blitzing, and wherever that linebacker is coming from, there's a vacated spot on the defense. So if the team brings five people at the quarterback, it means there's only six people dropped back in pass coverage, and it means you have an advantage with numbers, a matchup and a numbers advantage downfield in passing concepts. So you got to understand, young quarterbacks, You welcome blitzing. You welcome pressure on the quarterback. When they bring extra bodies, you like that. Now, most quarterbacks in the Alliance of American Football Week 1 could not handle that. They were either afraid of pressure or they couldn't recognize where it was coming from and throw the ball to the right spot. And some guys handled it really well. A guy who handled pressure really, really well was Logan Woodside. Logan Woodside was able to recognize pressure and use the ball, use that to his advantage and throw the ball to the right spot when it happened. Now, some guys couldn't figure it out. They couldn't figure out where pressure was coming from. You know, at times, Mike Bercovici, the San Diego Fleet quarterback, simply had no idea pressure was even coming. Or when it did happen, he panicked and he threw the ball up for grabs. All of the above are things you don't want to do. I don't know. I, look, I know that a lot of offensive linemen struggled with missing assignments and there were missed blocks, and that happens week one of, in any league, of course. Um, but that was a huge problem with a lot of quarterbacks. Getting hit is one thing. But you got to understand where the pressure is coming from, and you got to understand where to go with the ball. Where's your hot route? If people bring pressure, we like that. It means you have better matchups downfield. It looked like most quarterbacks week one didn't have a plan. When teams brought pressure, they didn't know how to deal with it. They weren't prepared for it, and they panicked. Another common issue we saw week one was situational awareness. In every situation, whether you're backed up on your own goal line or you're in the red zone downfield or you're late in the game with a two-minute drill— Every situation you're in has a certain list of procedures you got to follow. I want to share a best example we saw of situational awareness. Uh, First, a lack of situational awareness, and then a really, really good example of situational awareness. So what we saw first was uh, the San Antonio Commanders were on the goal line. Logan Woodside is their quarterback. And because it was third and long, the team they were playing, the San Diego Fleet, dropped eight men into coverage. They dropped a lot of people back. And when you're on the goal line, it means the field's a lot smaller. Everything's a lot quicker. There's less room downfield because the field is a lot shorter. And uh, what happened was Logan Woodside, this, the San Antonio Commanders quarterback, didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to take advantage of the fact that they dropped a lot of players and just took a sack. He held on the ball too long, took a sack. Now, in contrast, the Birmingham Iron quarterback, Luis Perez, was in the same situation. The Memphis Express dropped eight people into coverage, and like a snap of the finger, Luis Perez knew exactly what to do. When a team drops eight people into coverage on the goal line, you want to either run the ball as a quarterback because it means there's nobody accounting for you, or find your outlet like a running back, get him the ball quickly, and allow him to make a move in space and get into the end zone. Perez saw it immediately. He ran the ball up the middle, got as many yards as he could, That's an example of great situational awareness. Don't force the ball into coverage when there's eight people standing in the end zone in a really tight window where there's nobody open. Instead, take the yards they give you running with your feet or, again, check it down to your running back. Allow him to maybe make some people miss and get into the end zone. Luis Perez handled that perfectly. Finally, uh, with decision-making, just in general, week one was really, really was bad at times. A lot of people struggled. And uh, look, I know that every single, every single aspect of what I've talked about from a quarterback standpoint is decision-making. And, and I do want to repeat, and I think it's important for people to know, 
every quarterback in the Alliance of American Football has the physical tools to be successful. Every quarterback has the arm strength. Every quarterback has enough accuracy. Everybody can throw the football at this level. But the mental side of the game is what it comes down to and being calm under pressure, but really understanding what, who's open and why and when to throw the ball into coverage is what makes a big difference for the quarterbacks at this level. And uh, too many guys forced bad throws into double coverage week one. You know, some, sometimes people simply didn't see guys who were wide open. Other times you saw guys, uh, you know, what's his name? Uh, Mike Bergovici took a terrible risk late in the game throwing a ball up in double coverage. It was picked off on the goal line, ran back for like 50-yard return. That's a big, big problem. Now, one quarterback who not only made great decisions reading coverages, but he knew when not to throw the ball was Arizona Hotshots quarterback John Wolford. What he did so well was not forcing the ball into coverage, but running for yards, getting a pot, turning a, a negative play into positive yards. He said, okay, nobody's open downfield. I'll run for four yards, get tackled or slide or whatever. Or another thing he did really well was just throw the ball away. There's nothing there. Don't force it. Live to see another down. And John Wolford did a great, great job at understanding when to throw the ball away, when to run for three yards and slide, and when to, just for, when to indeed take a risk and throw the ball downfield. Uh, John Wolford made great decisions the entire game, and he's one of the better quarterbacks in the entire league. So those are a lot of the decisions we saw and the mistakes we saw that were most common week one of the Alliance of American Football. It was a lot of guys didn't know how to handle pressure. They didn't know pre where pressure was coming from. They didn't understand situations, how to deal with them. And they didn't know when to throw the ball away. Instead, they would force the ball into coverage and throw the ball into windows that just weren't open. Oh, I, I hate doing this. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I really don't like self-promotion. It makes me feel like a used car salesman. But I got to do it. So if you don't know, this is my podcast, Strong Opinion Sports. It's my favorite thing in the world. And you can subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud. You can find it on YouTube. You can find the full entire hour-long podcast on YouTube. You can also find shorter breakout clips like the one you just watched please do me a favor if you like anything i had to say maybe you hate me and you're mad about something share this podcast with your friends share it on facebook twitter instagram whatever you want to do help me grow by telling your friends about this show